Welcome back to Vantage Point Podcast, where we bring insight, keys, and perspective through the lens of God for everyday living. I'm your host, Nick, and I'm so glad you're here. If it's your first time being here, welcome, welcome, welcome to Vantage Point. If you've been here before, welcome back. This is a weekly podcast focused on gaining perspective through the lens of God. And last week, we started a series called Tomorrow, Living in the World of Uncertainty. And in the first episode, we looked at the sovereignty of God and how vital it is for us to acknowledge that sovereignty in uncertain times. And this week, and for the rest of this series, I want to focus on the things that take our focus away from God in, in uncertain times. And the reason to understand these things is because it allows us to identify red flags. That's what they are. They're red flags that stop us from hearing and seeing God. And for the first episode, we're going to look at a red flag that we all know too well. And in fact, 60% of people have reported dealing with this red flag. But the truth is, we all deal with it in some degree and have experienced this red flag. And the red flag for today is worry. And I want to dig a little deeper into this red flag and, and, and then land on ultimately what the Bible says and what God commands us to do in these things. But first things first, let's get a little facts uh, about worry, right? And and let's look at the definition first. And, and the worry is defined as a form of thinking about the future, defined as uh, thinking about future events in a way that may leave us anxious or apprehensive, right? And when we worry, we ultimately play in our heads different outcomes or thoughts or ideas of what may or may not happen. And actually in 2015, there was a study conducted about worrying. And in this study, subjects were asked to write down their worries over an extended period of time and then identify which of those imagined misfortunes did not actually happen. And what happened in this study is 85% of what the people wrote down actually never happened. And out of the 15% that did happen, 80% of people said that what they found was that they could either handle the difficulty better than they thought they would, or the difficulty taught them a lesson worth learning. And see, we spend so much time worrying that our minds begin to run, right? It begins to turn into physical issues. And there's actually things that physically in our bodies that will happen due to worrying. And then there's a stress that we get when we worry. And, and a lot of those things that, that we found just out of this study and, and looking at just some medical things and all of that. But we, you know, there's been studies done where they've seen brain, like brain mass shrinkage due to worrying, lower IQ, prone to heart disease, cancer, premature aging, predicting, um, you know, potential marital problems, family issues, depression, um, all of these things, even to some degree, dementia and Alzheimer's and, and all of these things. And it's almost like we get lost in worry, right? We get all caught up in it worried of so much about what's to come, what may happen, what may not happen. But even excessive worrying, it can lead to anxiety and panic um, throughout our days. We can see, you know, a lot of people deal with chronic worrying where this is all they do, right? And, and it's in a feeling or a sense of like, there's doom coming and fears and it just magnifies the worry, right? And then it just makes people ultra sensitive to the environment they're in, ultra sensitive to today, critical of other people. We they may see anything or anyone as a potential threat. And this is worrying. This is what worrying do. It can affect our appetite, our lifestyles, relationships, sleep, job performance. And, and many people who worry excessively are, are also just so caught up in anxiety that they, they seek relief in harmful lifestyles, right? So it turns to things like overeating or cigarettes or drinking, alcohol, drugs, all of those things. That's what the power of worrying can do to us. And, and I love this quote that I found. It says, worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only saps today of its joy. I'm going to read that again. Worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only saps today of its joy. So worry affects our today. We've spent so much time in it. And this quote really speaks volumes because it's such a red flag for us because we can say for certain, right? We have 100% no idea what's going to happen tomorrow, but yet we spend so much of our time worrying about tomorrow, right? Many people, and you might be listening to this podcast and, and you spend your time worrying so much about tomorrow 
that we can't enjoy today, right? We sit in worry so much. We don't see all the things that God is doing. And if we do see what he's doing, we don't hold on to that for tomorrow. You see this world we live in, we've seen it. We talked about it last week. That's filled with so many things that make us not only question the present, but most of all the future. And sometimes that worry turns into action, right? We get into the mindset that oh, we have to do something. We have to stop the future that may or may not happen that we see. And we get so caught up in having to do something for a future that hasn't happened yet. And as we begin to create what if scenarios due to our worry, we also formulate this is how I'm going to handle it solutions. And then we try to somehow manipulate the present to prevent the future fears or anxiety from happening. Right. And since the future is filled with unknown variables, how could we attempt to shape our present to dictate our future? Right. And this would somehow mean we're in control. And we talked about that last week, that even with the allowance of free will God gives, he is still ultimately in control. And with control and with him in control, we know that without a doubt, he will have his way 100% of the time. His will will be fulfilled. And, you know, of all the things we think about uncertainty, there is, there's actually one specific thing we do know about the future. We know that we will transition, without a doubt, from this life to eternity as believers in Jesus Christ. And even in the certainty of death, we know that it will happen. But we don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know how. Like, think about it. The reality is that transition can happen tomorrow. It could happen 50 years from now. But do we spend a lifetime worrying about it or do we live? And I want to spend a little bit of time. I want to share in transparency something I struggle with when it comes to worry. I worry about death. And I think when we look at the last few years, and yes, I said there is I have a worry about death. It comes and goes. And the last few years, I, I know for me, and I've talked about it in other episodes and with other people but the last few years, 2020, 2021, um, has been difficult for everyone. And, and it seems like death is more in our faces than in recent memory. Now, now you're probably thinking, you might be judging a little bit, and that's okay, right? You're Pastor Nick. You, you believe in Jesus. How could you possibly be worried about death? And yes, all of those things are true. But here's an even truer statement. I'm human. I have a mind, I have emotions, I have thoughts. And, and when some things happen in our lives, our mind takes those things and begins to process them. And sometimes the outcome is worry. Now, this isn't an everyday thought for me, right? I don't, I don't sit around every waking minute of my day thinking about death, right? But from time to time, it pops into my head. It comes back. And sometimes it's a big wave. And sometimes it's a little thought. And sometimes it's the statement that's going to happen. One day I will not be here. And all sorts of questions and all sorts of things start to come and linger in my mind. Did I do enough for my children? Did I do enough for my wife, my friends, my family? Will I be old like 105 or will it be next year? Will I see 40? You know, see, these are things, these are real thoughts that we often don't discuss. And that's the thing with worry. It puts us in such a position that we not only experience things physically and mentally, but it puts us in a mindset where we become isolated with our thoughts. And, and see, I know me just sharing that little bit of transparency about me unlocks some of you. And, and you might be thinking, man, if, if that's what you know, he's worried about what are other people worried, worried about, right? There's 7.5 billion people on this earth and they all worry at some point or another. You know, they all have a worry. Doesn't matter how old, doesn't matter how young, doesn't matter your race, doesn't matter your background or your economic status. Worry is an equal opportunity red flag. Okay. It puts us in that position where it hinders our ability to trust God and do these things. But I'm telling you, the power that I have, that I found, 
in my worry was that I had to share it with God. And that's the thing, like I'm sharing it with you, but I first shared it with him. And when we can be honest about ourselves to God, we can be honest about ourselves to us. You know, I had to take that worry to God. I had to take my thoughts and emotions about the future to him. Why? Because he's the only one that knows the future. And I can rest in knowing that I went to God in all his sovereignty and found rest. Now, this doesn't mean the worry doesn't come back because I mentioned it earlier. It comes and goes depending on life. Life will happen and it has a way of taking us back to worry. But instead of resting in my worry, I choose to rest in the sovereignty of God. And I want to encourage you right there. Before we jump into what the Bible says, I want you to open your eyes. I want you to open your heart and just allow these next few moments that you hear specifically from God, because you're not meant to carry your worry. You're not meant to hold on to it. You're not meant to walk with it. You're not meant to spend a lifetime worrying about what if, because we just said 85% of what if may not ever happen. So we spend an eternity, we spend a lifetime worried about what if, and we forget to live, we forget to have joy, we forget to find God in the midst of today because we're so consumed about tomorrow. And the Bible clearly shows us that as Christians, we're not to worry. Philippians 4, 6 says, we are commanded, do not be anxious, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. In this scripture, we learn that we should bring all of our needs, not some, not a few, not the ones we don't really want to deal with, but all of our needs and concerns, all of our worries, all of our fears, all our anxieties, we bring them to God in prayer rather than worry about them. Jesus encourages us to avoid worrying about our physical needs like clothing and food. He assures us that our Heavenly Father will take care of all our needs. Therefore, we don't have to worry about anything. And so since worrying should not be a part of of a believer's life, how does one overcome it, right? And in Peter first, first Peter 5 and 7, we are instructed to cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. God doesn't want us to carry around the weight of our problems and burdens. In this verse, he's telling us to give him all of our worries and concerns, even the ones about tomorrow, especially the ones about tomorrow. Because we, we have worries and thoughts about today, but a lot of our concern and worry are focused on tomorrow, right? We can't worry about the past. It already happened. We can't change it, right? And we see the present, but we don't see the future. We don't see tomorrow. And that's where our cares have to be casted to him. And that God is telling us to give it to him, right? And why does he want to take on our problems? The Bible says it's because he cares for us. He's concerned about everything that happens to us. Nothing, no worry, let me say this, no worry is too big or too small for his attention. Let me say that again. No worry that you have is too big or too small for his attention. See, when we give God our problems, he promises to give us the peace which transcends all understandings. And that's Philippians 4, 7. And that's one of the just wildest scriptures that people misunderstand. It's because we want to understand what is peace that transcends all understanding. It's God. His shoulders are big enough for our worry. He's able to handle any level of worry we have, but we have to get to the point of casting those cares to him. Because see, our shoulders, and it doesn't matter how big or broad your shoulders are, they weren't meant to carry worry. Look back at all the detriment we talked about earlier from a physical standpoint, a mental standpoint, that worrying has on our bodies. Our worry was never meant to consume us. 
to see in right relationship with God, we learn to trust him and then we can cast those worries to him and lighten our load in this life. And of course, you know what? There's going to be people that you might be listening to this on replay or whatever platform you're listening on and you might not know Jesus. You may not know or have relationship with God and worry and anxiety will be a part of your life. I mentioned this in a previous series and it's worth mentioning again that we know people that don't have relationship with God and they carry worry. Can you imagine the weight that could that that has? Can you imagine carrying something so heavy but have no one to give it to? And sure you might talk to a friend or you might talk to somebody, you know, but ultimately they are carrying their own weight of worry and their shoulders don't have the capacity to carry ours and theirs. And I'm pretty sure you've had, you know, maybe shared a worry with someone only for them to throw it back onto you, right? But to those who have given their lives to Jesus, he promises, come to me, all who are weary and burdened. Has your worry caused you to be weary? Are you burdened by worry? Because Jesus says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hear me when I tell you, if you hear nothing else, there is rest in relationship with Jesus. And I encourage you, make the time to get to know him today. Don't wait until tomorrow. Because see, the past is too late and the future is may not come but the present is here and now and so is god don't worry about tomorrow says jesus in the sermon on the mount we talked about this last week for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own for the third time jesus gives us gives his disciples the command not to worry repeating it because maybe he knew and I don't know, he might have known that the universal human tendency is to do just the opposite, to anxiously, anxiously focus on the future rather than on God who holds tomorrow in his hands. And Jesus teaches his disciples not to be anxious about what they will eat or what they will wear. These things represent basic human need. He urges them to trust in God as their provider, the faithful kingdom servant who's wholly committed to the king does not need to worry or be distracted by the cares of everyday life. We put our confidence in God, meaning that trusting he will take care of us and provide everything we need. I'm reminded of in the wilderness with the Israelites and God was teaching the children that same principle, depending on him for day to day provision. He would feed them with just enough manna to sustain their lives for that day. When they worried about tomorrow by storing up food the next day, the supply of manna would rot. Each day, every step, we must depend on his faithful supply. Because see, the God knows we face many circumstances and situations. He knows this world is where it is. But we have to ask the question and think practically, how can we follow the command, right? To stop worrying about tomorrow because it's not easy. The waves will come, right? Tomorrow, today, excuse me, might be joy. Tomorrow might be tragedy. And now worry again. Just when we get to the point of joy, here's something else. Just when we thought the pandemic was over, here's something else. Just when we thought the political and civil injustice was over. Here's something else. So how do we stop worrying about tomorrow? Well, the first thing is pray. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 gives us our most potent weapon. We talked about it. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray, pray, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. Experience his peace which exceeds anything, again, we can understand. When we find ourselves anxious or worry, worrying about tomorrow, we take 
our concerns to him in prayer. Again, casting those things. If you ever picture fishing, right, you're casting it out. But unlike fishing, you're not bringing it back. Once you cast something to him, you cast those cares to him, we're acknowledging that, God, you are bigger than this worry. And we tell him what we need and we thank him for what he's done. And that gives us an expectation to walk in peace and joy and all of the things that he gives us in place of the worry. And see, we spend time in his presence in prayer and he, we pour out those concerns and he responds with the supernatural peace that guards our hearts and minds. And we remember instantly that he comes to us in those moments of prayer. We rely on God's grace. Paul mentioned enduring a thorn in the flesh, right? We, we mentioned that. We know that story. In order, from keep, in order to keep me from being conceited, Paul says, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to tor torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may be restored. Paul took his concern to the Lord in prayer. And when the problem persisted, the apostle relied on the Lord to provide him with the grace to carry on. See, God's grace gave Paul the ability to see how the Lord will, glorify, will be glorified in his infirmity. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. 2 Corinthians 12.10 So we can get rid of the worries about tomorrow by seeing God with us in the future, providing the grace we need to get through. So when tomorrow comes, the Father will be there with grace to meet every need. And there's a disciplining of the mind we have to have, right? We have to learn how to pivot out of worry. And that comes with repetition. That comes with training, right? And after praying and we receive God's peace, right? We have to get into the muscle memory of doing that, fixing, not only just pivoting, but fixing our thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are exactly Excellent and worthy of praise, Philippians 4, 8. It's hard to worry when we're centered on God's true and faithful promises. Because see, if we're not disciplined in, in those things, if we're not disciplined in the peace, if we're not disciplined in the pivot, it produces worry. We train our minds on the word, which tells us God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control, 2 Timothy 1, 7. And lastly, we have to take action. We can't be wholly dedicated to God if we're devoted about worrying about tomorrow. Worrying about tomorrow is a failure to trust God and accomplishes nothing. We said it earlier, 1 Peter 5 and 7, give all your worries and cares to God. Sometimes obeying God's command not to worry about tomorrow takes action. Keep putting into practice every all you've learned and receive from me everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 9. Think about it. Think about it. If fears about tomorrow are consuming us today, we need to take action. We need to seek help. We need to get into our Bible. We need to get into the word. We need to go to God in prayer because see, it's not about just a reminder about don't worry about tomorrow, y'all. Like, no, it's an action that we have to take. There's work in that because tomorrow will always create its worry. And we have a mandate to go to God in prayer, to hold on to his grace, to be disciplined and take action because no difficulty is greater than our God. Worrying about tomorrow is looking at our future as if God will not be there to take care of it. But Jesus teaches us to live in God's presence one day at a time and deal with each problem when it comes through prayer. And our Heavenly Father will be with us tomorrow to care for us. And as we close out this episode, I, I know you might have heard this whole episode and you're still going to worry because it's our nature for one. And things are going to happen that are going to put us in a position to worry. There's so much we don't know and won't know until the day or time arrives. 
But what we do know is worrying doesn't put us in the best position physically, mentally, or spiritually. What we can't do is take the approach of accepting worry. Because see, when we choose to worry, we remove God from the equation of our lives. We place our trust in ourselves to deal with the future in our way. And in essence, we declare that worrying is better than trusting. Worrying is better than resting. And that's a dangerous place to be in. And in Jeremiah 5 and 6, it gives us an example of what that might look like. It says, thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhibit, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land, which is not inhabited. And just a few verses down in seven and eight, we hear a different option from Jeremiah. He says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. See, that one's better. Notice how the tree isn't worried about future events. It doesn't fear the heat. It's it's not anxious about the drought. It's growing and bearing fruit. In other words, the tree doesn't let the uncertainty of the future impact its ability to produce in the present. The tree places its trust in the only source that can sustain it and help it focus on present things that matter. And I want to leave you with that. Where does your worry fall into? Will you still focus on the uncertainties of tomorrow or rest in the certainty of our God today? Let's pray. Dear God, lately I've been so worried about things out of my control. I pray that you help us to trust that you are working on every little detail of our lives and that we have nothing to fear or worry about. We know sometimes life and circumstances are just too hard, but you, God, are our source of peace. I pray for the ones hearing these words right now. I pray that whatever they're facing, that they would take a deep breath in and take more of you and your peace while they exhale any of the worry that weighs them down. I pray that they would be anxious for nothing, but will come to you in prayer with all their needs, thanking you even now that you know how you're going to take care of every little detail. I pray and thank you that you care about the things we care about and that you are our source of peace in the midst of these storms. Fill us with peace, O oh God. We trust in you and you alone. We know we can't beat this on our own, but we know that we have you and you've already paid the ultimate price to carry our burdens. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue this series next week as we dive into another red flag that has our focus about tomorrow. And until then, keep seeking keys, insight, and perspective to everyday living through the lens of God. It'll change your life and your world. God bless.